Hello, everyone. Have you ever wondered what sophisticated nation-state hacking groups, like the North Korean Lazarus Group, what their code actually looks like, what their malware does and how it unfolds? And have you ever wanted to spy on them whilst they're writing this malware? Well, if you fit that very specific criteria, then this video is going to be just for you. Because we have a unique opportunity to actually watch the Lazarus Group write malware, write an exploit. We get to see the versions that they create, and we're going to break down exactly what that malware actually does and the payloads that it sends. It's going to be an awesome video. I'm so freaking excited about it. Before we get into it, I have one small favor. There is a small but not zero chance that I will end up in a black van carted off to North Korea. So as my last request to you, subscribe to the channel, like this video. All right, enough about that. Let's get into it. So what basically we're looking at today is this package here. Now, do not try and find this package. It is still live on NPM as I'm making this video. Hopefully it will be taken down soon. But this is more infected than Jen's computer from the IT crowd. No, 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 Jen, it's infected. If this was a human being, I'd shoot it in the face. Now, I want to add some context as to how we found this package because it is, it is important to the story. So at Aikido Security, we're working on malware detection, where we're scanning all the packages that come into NPM, Maven, PyPy, and we're identifying whether they have malware in them. And we're using scanning tools to identify what we call indicators. And if there's enough indicators, it goes to an LLM that compiles all that information and lets us know, hey, this is malware or this isn't malware, and then we investigate it. Now, what's really interesting is that it flagged up this and said, hey, this is malware. And that's not an uncommon thing to, to happen in NPM of today, I must say. And we looked at it, and at first we couldn't see what was malicious about it. And I'm going to show you. So if we go back to the first version that was uploaded in here, and we have a look at the code, this is the main file that we have, index.js. And it all looks pretty harmless, if you're asking me. We've got very basic function. It's not really doing anything. And so, like, at first, we were a little bit confused. We thought perhaps our LLM system had made a mistake. However, there is an indicator here <laughs> that, 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 is, that is pretty problematic. And pause the video. Write in the comments if you know what it is. No cheating. I'm on to you. Uh, but let me know if you think you know what that indicator is. And I will tell you now. It is this scroll bar that is suspicious. Because if we scroll all the way over to here, our very benign, boring code gets pretty spicy real quick. And this is quite hard to read, so if I just pull this up on my uh, IDE here, this is, what the, this is what the code kind of unobfuscated is looking like. So what actually is happening here? So it's calling this domain, and then right away this looks dodgy. They're, they're pretending that it's some kind of IP checker, and they've kind of obfuscated it under this railway.app kind of domain here. It's all very dodgy. And what is a giveaway is this eval function here. Basically, eval means that it's going to take this payload, so it's going to get a payload from this here. So that's a that's a big warning side that we're getting a payload from somewhere else. And then immediately, once I have that payload, I'm going to run it. And we're sending across these headers. And these headers actually trigger trigger the malware. I'll explain that in a minute. And I'm going to show you the malware that's on this page. I will. But first, I want to get there because some really funny things happened in between. And we got to spy on the, the, the hackers whilst they were trying to debug that. Now, I say debug because actually... This doesn't work. This doesn't run as expected. And the attackers also know that. So again, in the comments, let me know. Can you see why this wouldn't work? Now, there's actually two mistakes in here. The first one that you can see is that there's no requirements for Axios in, in, the, in the code. So we would need to require it for this to actually run. But even if they had done that, if we look here and go into the package.json file, Axios isn't actually uh, isn't actually here as a dependency. So there's a couple of mistakes uh, that have happened. Now, why is this important? Why am I talking about this? And why am I not just showing you the good malware, the juicy stuff? I'm going to show you it. Uh, but the reason why is something hilarious happened. We got notified by this, and we're all looking at this, and we're confused. And then as we're doing that, we notice a new version comes through. And this time, 
I can just show you it. But this is version 0.01. And if we look at this, we can see some things have changed. Now, the main difference between this is that we now have an async function. So this async function allows you to kind of wait until the, the payload has fully come in. It kind of like pauses it until the payload has fully, has fully arrived and then they've, they're, they've sent it out. And they've also uh, logged, logged it. So this is hilarious because this is how like a regular person like me would debug something. But I don't know why, but I just didn't expect like advanced hacking groups to, to use console log to debug their exploits, but they do. So it's good to know that we're dealing with humans after all. The AI hasn't taken over. Now the next version that we can go to, if we go into 0, 1.02, if we look in our code, what we can see is that they've finally figured it out. They've added Axios into their dependencies. So they've figured out that actually they need to have Axios into the dependencies. And you would think now that that means that they've got this all working. But when we look into it here, they still haven't required it. So it's still, it still uh, wouldn't work in there. And what is hilarious is that on like clockwork, 10 minutes later, and we're all watching this at this point, we get another uh, version that comes in here. So even in the final version, they, they, they still haven't figured it out. Uh, but you can see very clearly that they're trying different things to understand why their payload isn't running as expected, why they don't have the cookies in the air. Like, what's, what's actually going on? Little do they know that the only reason is because they're now just missing this line of code. <laughs> So I don't know about you, but I absolutely love this. All right, but this is kind of the the initial area. And and I do find this just so funny that the, the malware that I'm gonna show you now is actually really sophisticated, but for whatever reason, they just couldn't get this right. But the the real craft or the real clever thing about this isn't actually this lines of code here. This is just the kind of the funny thing. What's actually interesting is the payload, which is this here. What we can do now is we can take a quick look at the, the payload, the endpoint there that's delivering that malware. Now, please, God, do not open this up in your browser. Uh, <laughs> please just, just stay away. We're trained professionals. Don't do anything. If I do open it up in my browser, I'm just doing this to show you kind of what it looks like here, like visually. All you get is this location available. And it's not going to show us anything else interesting uh, here. What we can do is we can do a curl command uh, with V and go uh, to this endpoint and take a look at what happens in our terminal. So we can see, you can see down here the location available and essentially there's some handshakes going on but there's nothing exciting here happening. And that is because when we actually look at the malicious code that we have, something needs to happen and it needs to trigger these headers. Now, what these headers kind of look like, is it this X secret key kind of almost looks like it's meant to be some kind of like environment variable, like an API key. But if we just use this as a header, then essentially we trigger the system to deliver us the malware itself instead of just delivering us that like location checking uh, crap. So what we're gonna do now is back in our terminal we're going to use the same curl command, but we're also going to send these, these headers, right? And these are the headers that we can see in here. So basically, all we're doing is we're triggering the malware to be delivered, essentially. And when I do that, we do get an interesting response. This may not look very interesting, this gobbledygook, but this is the malware. This is the malicious JavaScript that it's actually delivering. And we're going to take a look at that. This is like the art behind the malware. That, that other stuff, yeah, that was fun. We got to see them playing around. We got to see them trying to debug it. But here's where you can actually see, oh, yeah, we're dealing with an advanced threat actor group. And uh, it's from this signature of this malware that we can actually attribute it to the Lazarus group because I'm sure some of you are wondering how do we actually know and it's because of the signature of this malware right we we're, we're very familiar with this threat group and we can recognize their signatures in their malware now obviously it's impossible to take this it's heavily obfuscated it's looks like absolute garbage. So we need to clean this up a little bit. We need to run it through some deobfuscation and then we can actually look 
and evaluate what this malware actually does. So let's go ahead and do that. So here we have the, the malware in its unobfuscated glory. I say unobfuscated, it's still pretty obfuscated, but at least we can kind of read it and understand what's happening. So what does the malware actually do? Well, we're gonna break it up into two parts. The first part is it steals a bunch of stuff and sends it to an attacker. The second part is it tries to install more malware onto your machine. So let's look at the first part first. So here's what it does. It scans for profiles, for browsers like Chrome, Brave, Opera, Firefox, and it's going to steal all the information inside that. And then that might be encrypted passwords, will be cookie details, could be session IDs, everything like that. The second thing it's going to do is, and this is typical for the Lazarus group, is it's going to look for browser extension type wallets. So things like MetaMask and Phantom, and it's going to specifically find them and then steal any information about your crypto wallets that it can. This ultimately is one of the biggest things that it's definitely after. There's some areas in here where it's stealing your where it's trying to steal any Mac OS keychain files. So another very nasty thing. And then it uploads everything to the uh, attacker's C2 server or command center. The next part is it's actually trying to download some files onto your machine so that the attackers have malware and essentially a backdoor into your machine where it's going to consistently monitor you and send things to them. So when I said that this looks like Jen's computer from INT2, I'm really not kidding. This part is wild. So let's go through some of it. Now, as I said, we're not going to go through all of this line by line, but around here we can see that it's trying to go through some of the browser profiles. Now, this gobbledygook here, all of these, these are actually Chrome extension IDs. So if I Google this in here, I get the MetaMask uh, Chrome extension on the web store. MetaMask is a crypto wallet that sits in your Chrome extension. And all of these hard-coded strings are exactly the same. These are all for extensions on the Chrome Web Store uh, where it's looking for crypto. So here we can see that they're really targeting uh, those cryptos. They're hard-coding the, the IDs in there. So they're saying, hey, if there's any information about with these extensions on the computer, let's steal that. And we can also see where they're actually looking in the application for that Google Crime to try and find the profiles here as well. If we go just a little bit down from that, we can actually see where it's starting to look for log files. It's looking for LBD files, level database files. So it's trying to find all kinds of sensitive information uh, on your machine here or in the environment that you're running it with. If we scroll down a little bit further, we can actually see here, this is the IP where it's sending the data to. So this is the attacker's IP address that they're actually sending the information to. And that pretty much is like the first part. Now the second part, ooh, that's extra nasty. You've already stolen all your stuff <laughs> and, and now they're going to infect you with malware. But let's have a look at it anyway. So a little bit towards the end, we can actually see this get request. And what is that actually doing? So here it's trying to create a Python file. So this is for Windows creating an executable. It's trying to create a, a NPL here. And this is basically just installing malware onto your, uh, onto, your, uh, onto your profile. Now, if you don't have Python installed and you and can't do that, it's, uh, it doesn't give up. No, 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 it has a fallback. And if we have a look for this here, it's creating a curl command to execute here, which is going to download a zip folder for you. Again, containing malware. So there we have it. That's the really, really nasty stuff that we have uh, going on behind the doors. Now, this video was so much fun to make because we got to spy on some, some threat actors, some really uh, important and big threat actors, actually. We got to look at what they do and we got to break down their malware. Uh, but this isn't actually that unique. And we actually find thousands of these types of packages uh, every month and we publish them. So there's a couple of things if you want to stay informed about malware is that we have something called Intel. Now, uh, we can, this is where we report vulnerabilities that aren't in uh, the CVE databases. And we also report malware that we discover. So if you want to check out if you're using packages that contain malware, <laughs> that would be bad, then you can uh, follow this thread. And of course, all of this available is in the Aikido Security Product Suite. So if you want to just make sure that you get alerted if a package that you have 
like is turned malicious. This does happen. Uh, an example is like UA parser or event stream where a package was turned malicious. Then Aikido Security can help you with that. I hope you enjoyed the video. I certainly did. And I can't wait to see you on the next one. So please do me a favor, l subscribe to the channel. There is a small but not zero chance I will be put in a black van because of this video. So please do me uh, that favor. And uh, other than that, I'll talk to you on the next one.